Hey folks, Doc here. It is stupid cold outside. Like, it is cold. It is colder than my wife's booty. Like, cold. And believe me, her booty gets cold. Anyways, we are here to talk about this. This little piece of garbage right here. This MTD Yard Machines snowblower. What it is, what it did, and what it's about to become. All right, so in addition to the cold weather, we've also had some snow. I know a lot of the southern states that normally don't get particularly cold and normally don't see snow have gotten some snow as well. And uh, I mean, up here, Ontario, Canada, we get snow, but we took a good pounding the other day. So I had a particularly Monday-ish Monday at work and I got home from work and I thought, well, I don't really want to do this, but you know, fricking 14, 16, 18 million, 100,000 feet of snow later, I figured I better get on her. <clears throat> so I whipped out the crappy old MTD snowblower here that I picked up last year or the year before for cheap because I needed a cheap snowblower. That's what I got. I got a cheap snowblower. Anyways, whipped her out. Uh, dealt with most of it, or at least as much as I wanted to for the night. And I was just finishing up the walkway right in front of my door. And the self-propel just stopped working and stopped moving. And I squeezed the handle and it kind of lurched a little bit and it stopped. And played with the handle a little bit more and it lurched and stopped and lurched and stopped. And I thought, fantastic. I know exactly what this is. So, you know, I dragged it the 150 feet through 1,800 million feet of snow back to the shop here and flipped it on its nose, tore the transmission out, and I'll show you what I found. All right, so here is the transmission from it, and not present on this shaft here is the gear that I'm going to show you in greater detail in a second here. Um, so it's just, uh, you know, kind of a worm drive here, and the one gear is, well, the worm gear is there. It's just a worm gear. Anyways, crappy little plastic housing. Uh, and here's the gear in question. <sighs> These things drive me insane. I guess they put them in as some sort of engineered weak link, which is stupid because this thing has a clutch that, in theory, doesn't really lock up. It's these two slightly cone-shaped discs that bear into this gear from both sides, and that's your clutch. And this little lever here, which you can barely see, is what actuates it. Uh, anyways, this thing ate itself. Um... Over here is the oil I pulled out of here, and, you know, kind of as soon as I do this, you'll see what's going on here. This is, like, liquid gold. This is uh, this is almost like copper anti-seize, and that should be regular gear oil, and all that is is that powdered. Great, huh? So I got on the old interwebs there, and I started searching for parts. Um, you know, obviously I'm perfectly capable of fixing the thing. Uh, it took me no time at all to figure out how to tear it apart. Um, you know, get the thing apart, diagnose the problem. And I've certainly had to replace these stupid little centered bronze gears before, and that's not an issue. Here's the issue. The issue is, is apparently these, you know, bottom line MTDs are so cheap that they consider them disposable, and I could not find a replacement gear to save my life. I found entire transmissions for about 200 Canadian, you know, 200 and change. And then you throw in shipping and all that stuff on there. And it just didn't seem like a particularly desirable solution. Um, I think the snowblower last year, whenever the hell I bought it, I think I spent 150 or 200 bucks on it in the first place. I got, you know, several good blows out of it, but I'm not pouring another 200 bucks into it. Not for the cheap piece of garbage this is, um, you know, single speed self propel it barely worked at the best of times. Uh, no reverse, no selectable speeds, no features of any kind. I mean, you actually have to grab the chute handle and turn the chute manually. And uh, just not too interested in burning any more money on that. Uh, so I climbed on the old marketplace and I picked up a Boland snowblower. And yes, I'm aware that Boland's is also at this point owned by MTD. Uh, but the machine's a lot better built. It's got a headlight and heated hand grips and this little joystick control for the chute. And uh, power steering, that's a new one on me. It's got a little trigger under each handle and it skid steers. So if you pull the left trigger, it skids left. And if you pull the right trigger, it skids right. Um, five or six speed forward, couple speed reverse, yada, yada, yada. And just generally better built. So we're going to go with that. Meantime, back at the farm, 
I have this stupid little snowblower here that's not doing me any good at all. So back we are to this piece of garbage here. And, you know, the very first thought I had, of course, was to uh, take the uh, little engine off the thing. It's um, 179cc. It's a Chinese engine, power more, whatever the case may be. So it's probably good for uh, five and a half horsepower. GX160 is five and a half horsepower, I think. Yeah. Anyway, so this is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of that. So, I mean, I've got a little go-kart engine here for whatever purpose is going to suit, I guess. Uh, and I guess it's just scrap the rest, right? Well, maybe not. Um, I'm kind of looking at this thing and thinking that, you know, if I pull the chute off and if I pull the impeller housing off and, you know, I pull the blower off, all that stuff, um, yank the engine off, what I'm left with is, uh, you know, basically I've got a handle and wheels and a base. And for the longest time, I've been meaning to build an engine test stand. And I think that's what this is going to become. So I've stripped all the extraneous crap off of this thing, the bales, the control cables, all of that stuff. And what I'm left with is just the very, very basics. And now I've got to kind of figure out what I'm going to do with this thing. Um, so we already know that it's got a bolt pattern that'll take small four-stroke single cylinders on it, and that's fine. Um, I can leave that as is. Obviously, I've got to extend this thing forward a little bit for larger engines, both vertical shaft and horizontal. So I think I'm going to have to take this flange off and zap a plate down to it and cut out the center section to make room for a vertical shaft. I want to bolt a vertical engine down to it. Uh, and then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a provision for a gas tank up on the handle somewhere so it can just gravity feed down and I can connect the hose to the carburetor. Okay, so here's where I'm at at the moment. I've got one of these fuel tanks from one of those 10 horsepower Yanmar knockoff China diesels. And with a couple of carefully drilled holes and some tie wire, some mechanics wire, and putting one of the handles in kind of upside down and backwards, and a couple more holes and some tie wire, and we have our fuel tank mounted. Now, I don't know if this is going to show up on camera. But if you look very, very closely, you can see that the welds for the tank are below the wire, below these holes. So I drilled small holes very, very carefully and uh, didn't penetrate the tank. So anyways, fuel tanks in, that's good. Now what's going on down here is I hacked out what I needed to hack out. And I found out back in the scrap pile what is the rear back plate hitch plate for an old Sears Suburban. And for whatever reason, and I don't even remember anymore, I cut a chunk of steel out of it because I needed a flat piece of steel for something. So it leaves me with a gigantic hole in there. The dimensions are pretty good. It fits over the existing frame nicely. And I'm just kind of playing mock-up right now. Now this space here is a little large for drilling a bunch of mounting holes. They, they, it might be a little bit too much of a spread. However, Having thought about it, that actually leaves me a lot of easy mounting options for whatever engine I want to put on here. Because if I just take some big flat washers, or I could make some steel tabs, that are just basically going to clamp to the rails and bolt into the base of whatever engine I'm putting down, and that allows me to slide it back and forth, turn it, play with the spacing, and I'm not relying on having, you know, holes punched in specific strategic locations. And it'll probably make getting the engine on and off easier too, especially if I make steel plates that are rectangular and they can sort of toggle into place and out of place.
battery box on. Nothing special, just a, I guess, plastic craftsman battery box with a piece of angle iron under it to bolt it to the structure and support it decently enough. It'll hold the battery, that's all I care. This thing isn't exactly going to be racing through the mud. It's just holding an engine. There we go. Clean that up a little bit. So I guess while I'm waiting for some paint to dry, I'll show you the current state of the union. Um, just black. Yep. <laughs> so this piece here is literally the control panel that's going to have the choke, the starter button, and the kill switch on it. Um, throttle cable is up here. Obviously, I showed you the fuel tank installation battery, blah, 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 blah. Um, I've got the starter relay just mounted down low on the handle here. I've got to let the paint dry and basically do some wiring. Uh, as far as the engine mounts go, I'm going to blast a little paint off here so when an engine's sitting on there, it'll ground. The name of the game here was as cheap and easy as possible. So I didn't exactly build any of my usual standards. Um, didn't weld anything, just bolted the pieces together, drilled, bolted, zip-tied, bits of wire, whatever the case may be, because I don't care. Don't want to spend anything on it. This snowblower ticked me off, so without me, you know, really putting anything further into it, um... Just poof, there's an engine stand. All right, so a little bit of wiring. And we're gonna be off to the races. All I'm gonna do is just set up a real simple circuit here, a couple of them actually. Um, wire going from the main terminal on the relay the battery terminal on the relay up to the push button and right back down to the start lug on the relay and then a little ground thing for the kill switch and i think what we're going to do is we're just going to run the length of wire from the kill switch to an alligator clip that we can just clip onto the uh the engine being tested in the appropriate location <clears throat> seems like the best thing to do um, obviously different engines are going to have slightly different requirements so all I can really do is try to sort of set things up as best as possible for the most common scenarios and leave myself the ability to adapt on the fly if I come across something uncommon. All right, so I've got Greg's engine here which is a 16 horsepower Briggs & Stratton Vanguard V twin vertical shaft. Uh, this engine is going to get some work done to it, and it's going in Mule 2.0, so it might as well be on the engine stand for now. So I've got a couple of bolts run into it, uh, just to, you know, get it to bolt down and, you know, obviously transfer the ground connection. Um, this alligator clip here is my kill lead coming from the switch on the handle, and there's the lead going to the starter relay. And I've got the throttle and choke hooked up. There's the throttle handle, and I'll just get the camera over here and Kind of work it for a second so you can see that's doing something and if i can lean over and hit the choke there you go uh starter relay is all wired up all the controls are wired up there is fuel in the tank fuel in the filter fuel in the line hopefully fuel going to the carburetor so i'm just going to go ahead and uh give her a little choke switch the ignition on i'm not going to run it long because no tins but let's hit it and see Oh, look at that. In the true spirit of Murphy's Law, my only lawn and garden battery is dead. <laughs> so we're going to give her a boost, but I mean, everything else remains. So I've got the kill switch on, I've got the choke pulled, and... All right, there you have it. The stand functions as it should. Life's good. 
All right, so said and done, I think I've got about $15 into this thing and about three hours of my time. I trucked over to Princess Auto. I bought the switch. Um, I bought the push button. And what else did I buy? The throttle cable. Everything else I had on hand. Everything else was, you know, just random parts and pieces I had kicking around. And, of course, an El Cheapo crappy MTD snowblower. Um, I've wanted an engine test stand for a while. I uh, just never got around to it, and this just seemed like the opportunity, I guess. Uh, make the stand that I needed and put out a video. What the heck? You guys can do this, too. It doesn't have to cost anything at all. If you've got enough junk kicking around, you can do this from a snowblower. You could probably do it from a generator frame. You can definitely do it with a gas pressure washer stand. Um, maybe even one of the larger wheeled portable compressor deals. Um, you could even keep the tank there and, you know, carry around compressed air at the same time. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff you can do with enough junk kicking around. But the bottom line is, is I kind of wanted to show you, you know, how to throw an engine test stand together for, you know, almost nothing and very little time. And that's what I've done here. So thanks for tuning in to another episode of Sprockets Garage on YouTube. And if any of you guys are into RC cars, planes, drones, drag racing, mud running, RC crawling, you may or may not be aware that I'm also into that stuff. I put up a couple of RC videos on this channel a while ago. They got some views, but I mean, obviously, most of you are obviously here for the small engine content. However, with that being said, uh, my buddy Greg and I have launched another YouTube channel called Intent RC. And in the video description down below, you're going to find a link to the Intent RC YouTube channel and the Facebook group. And uh, I would invite you to check it out if you're into RC pretty much anything. Um, Please feel free to subscribe and share and like the videos. And uh, until next time, take care of yourself. And believe me, her booty gets cold. Like the other week, I sprained my wrist at work and I got home and I said, honey, can you take your pants off? I got to take the swelling down. Some of the swelling came down. <laughs>